All right, tonight we're gonna to be working on the cylinders here on the 5320 loader, and we're gonna be rebuilding this one here on the, the left. I replaced the one on the right because, and this will make more sense as we disassemble it, but it failed in such a way I could not disassemble it. We ended up making a jig and putting it in a 20 ton press and the whole nine yards, it just was not coming apart. So it got replaced, but for tonight, we are going to be resealing this one now so what we're doing first as you can see here there's a snap ring on the end of this cylinder and i have already removed that snap ring what we're going to do next is take a brass punch because you do not want to damage this ram but we're going to take a brass punch and we're going to knock this end cap back into the cylinder a little bit now it's going to make a mess when i do that so don't be surprised I'm gonna stop right there. Right there, if you can see it, there's a little groove inside this cylinder. That groove is part of the way we're gonna disassemble this thing. Uh, the end cap has an external snap ring on it. And in normal operation, the end cap is pushed up, the snap ring catches in that groove and it keeps it from coming out. The snap ring on the outside keeps the end cap from going back in. Okay, these are the, uh, the piston kits I bought because there are two kits per cylinder. There's a ram kit and a piston kit. I'm using rod and ram interchangeably because that's just how I'm used to doing it. But if you look in this kit, it looks pretty standard, but what we're missing is the special disassembly tool. The special disassembly tool comes in the John Deere kit and it is this little plastic ring right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this little plastic ring inside the body of that cylinder and it's gonna fill that little groove we just exposed. This thing has to be all the way down in that groove or the end cap is just gonna catch it and tear it up. So you can see right there, our little tool is in that groove. All right, so let me show you what we got going on here. This is your ram assembly. This is your piston, this is your rod, this is your end cap. The way this works is the end cap secures at the very end of the cylinder. There's a snap ring that goes in this groove here. This is the inner snap ring I just talked about that we had to collapse. And this is a seal. That keeps crap from getting in the cylinder. Back here, this is the actual piston. These two black things here are wear rings. They keep the metal from making contact with the body. And this little yellowish bit in the center, that's actually the seal for the piston. And then inside this cap, we're gonna have another wear ring, a wiper seal, and the actual lip seal. So first thing we gotta do is remove this nut on top. It's an inch and 3 16 which I believe is a 30 millimeter. And it's on there pretty good. We're just gonna slide the piston off and you'll see it's got the indentation cut in it where it seats on that ram there. So we'll slide that off, slide our end cap off, and that's it for the ram for now. So we're gonna go in and just rip the old seals out. You do need to be clean when you're doing this, but you don't have to be super fanatical surgically clean. You just want to make sure you're not getting little particles of anything that shouldn't be there in there. So first, I'm just going to take my wear ring, slide it over itself. There we go. That ring sits just a fractions of an inch proud of that wall just to keep it from grinding itself in there. So this is our wiper seal. You can tell because it's got the little lip on it right there. And you just slide it in until it snaps into the groove. A lot of guys boil these or run them in some warm water to soften them up. I don't. Doesn't hurt anything to do it typically, but I just don't. 
And if you're going to use your pick to ease them back in, use the back side, use the rounded part. So we'll flip it over, and now we are ready to do our lip seal that actually holds all the pressure in this thing. And on it, you'll see one side is flat, the other side has this, uh, you know, this little groove in it. You want the groove facing toward pressure. Now we will move on to the outside of the end cap here. Slide you back just a little bit. Pay attention to the order these come off in. Here's our new little orange flat ring. This ring will end up flat once we get it down in the groove. Now it goes on the bottom from our perspective here. Then our new O-ring is going to go on. There we go. O-ring, spacer. Now we'll flip it over and replace that O-ring. And again, when you clamp it in the vise, go down past your sealing surface. Just roll your new one in there. And that's it for our end cap, so set that aside. All right, so with the ram back in the vise, we're going to put the end cap back on, because if we don't put the end cap back on now, we'll have to take it all back apart. Take your fingers, take your hands, take a damp rag, just get a little bit of hydraulic oil and lubricate these seals. You are still probably going to have to use some force. Do not be scared of that. Or it'll make a liar out of me. You know, that's fine too. Then take your piston. And we're going to install it exactly like it came off with the concave part facing down so it locks in nice and tight on the cylinder. And then make sure your threads are clean. Once your threads are clean, get some red Loctite or some other super tough, super strong, super not going to come apart thread locker and use plenty of it because if this nut unscrews inside the cylinder the ram can come out of the piston it can damage literally everything the threads on the ram can be ruined the piston can be ruined the end cap can get ruined and the body of the cylinder can get damaged on the inside from this nut banging around so you absolutely want to make sure it is on there for good you can torque these. I am 100% positive there is a torque spec. I have no idea what that torque spec is. So I'm going to torque it with Loctite and experience. That is as tight as I can get it. So that is where we're going to torque it to. Wasn't that easy? <laughs> you don't want to do that for very many things, but this is one of them where you can get away with it. The key is you just don't want that coming off. Now we need to remove this seal. And if I can't get under it, I'm going to try to just break it like I did those other ones. Get our new one. Oh, I hate these. With a passion. But the good news is if I screw it up, I've got an extra kit. And again, if you're using a pick, extreme caution, because trust me, it takes absolutely nothing to put a pick through your hand in an operation like this. I'll give you a guess as to how I know that. There we go. Now this got twisted and stretched during that process, and I really am not crazy about it. So, I don't know. We'll see how it does, I guess. But we're all reassembled. Let's go put it back in the tractor. All right, here we are. First things first remove that little tool otherwise it can get caught and pulled back up in there and create all kinds of new problems now the end of this cylinder is chamfered a little bit to help ease the parts down in there so we are going to be relying on that and 
more hydraulic oil to help this thing get back together. All right, we're in. Uh, here we go. Oh, come on, baby. Now, with a good seal in there, what's happening is the line is on, it's trying to compress all that air in that cylinder. So by taking that line off, it should go on a lot better. Now, when it comes to these rings, it can feel like you need three hands to do this. So one thing that I have found helps a little bit is if you have a piston ring compressor that small that you can get in there, use that. Otherwise, get a hose clamp. It's not ideal, but it'll work. And you may need to pull it back a little bit to give your hose clamp enough room to bite onto the little ring there. All right, now let's get it out of here because it's trying to get pulled down in there. Now, I just realized I forgot something very important. And there's a way to work around it. But do you know what I missed? I forgot our big snap ring that holds the uh, end cap from going too far in. So not a big deal. You don't have to reassemble the cylinder, but just very carefully spread it that way and slip it around the rod. There we go. And you will need a decent sized pair of uh, snap ring pliers for this thing. But we are gonna pop it right back in its groove. And what's gonna happen now is as we drive it down, that internal snap ring is gonna lock into the groove inside the cylinder. And this external snap ring will prevent it from going too far. So it will be reassembled. All right, let's see what we did. I'm gonna call that fixed. You can see that's just old oil. That's a little bit of residual right there, but she is not leaking near like she was. Our brand new cylinder looks good as I would hope. So there you go. That's how to rebuild a John Deere hydraulic cylinder. The 5320 is back in action now. It is up for sale again. If anyone is interested, it can be yours. Shoot me a message or leave me a comment. We'll work it out. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We got hay to move. We got cattle. We're going to be moving soon. I'm, uh, I got a couple things yet to go on the TS-115 before I get the pump back. So thanks for watching and more later.